Right, thank you all for waiting. Uh, now we can get down to writing this video. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> Guys, come on, I've told you about spicy food before work. There I go. Oh! Oh! And me! <laughs> I'm shaking my booty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, it stinks in here. Alright, fine. I guess this is how I'm gonna have to do this video after all. <laughs> Greetings fellow science fiction fans, my name is Justin, and you are watching all things sci-fi, and in this- Hello, hello, it's me from the future. I'm currently editing this video and I just wanted to apologize for the time it took to make this one. Uh, it was more down to the pronunciations of some of the words in this video. Uh, my audio for this was about two hours long, so it, it was a hell to cut down. So I would just ask that if you do enjoy what I make here, may I make sure to give us a subscribe and a like to just sort of show your appreciation for the stuff. But yeah, uh, enough of me driveling on. Enjoy the video. In this video, we're going to be covering Doctor Who's skin wearing, Fart producing aliens, the Slitheen. Now a common misconception with the Slitheen is that they are a species, when in fact they are actually a family of Rexacorico-Falipatorian criminals. The Slitheen were rivals and cousins of the Blatherine family, and cousins of the Rakitin family, and descendants of the Slaverine family, who were descended from the Changlin family, which were the earliest descendants of the Hut's big degenerate. Oh man, did their ancestors get around? The Slitheen originated on the planet Raxacoracophalopatorius and bribed their way into their government, which caused the planet's economy to crash under their rule. Eventually, the population rose up against them and the entire family was tried and found guilty indefinitely by the Jadun. Thus, they were sentenced to death. However, many of the family fled from justice and went on to become interplanetary criminals. In the year 102 AD, the Slitheen were amongst the many factions to join the Alliance and who came to Stonehenge to imprison the 11th Doctor in the Pandorica to save the universe. When the Alliance's plan failed, the Slitheen were turned to dust and removed from the universe with the rest of creation. However, when the Doctor reboot the universe, they were returned. Moving forward into the 21st century, in March of 2006, the Passamer Day branch disguised themselves as various humans holding leadership positions in an attempt to seize control of the British government in an effort to start a nuclear war. The Slitheen's aim was to turn Earth into a huge nuclear reactor pile and sell its remains off as starship fuel. The attempt was ultimately foiled by the Ninth Doctor when he told Mickey Smith to target Downing Street with a missile. However, one Slitheen named Blonde Fell Foch Passamer Day Slitheen survived the ordeal having teleported herself to the Isle of Dogs. Later the same year, she managed to get herself elected as the Mayor of Cardiff to try and abuse her position in an attempt to escape Earth by destroying the local nuclear reactor. The Cardiff Space Time Rift would amplify this explosion so it would not only destroy the entirety of Earth, but also enable her to escape the planet on her tribophysical waveform Macokinetic Extrapolator. This was again followed by the Doctor and his allies when he used his sonic screwdriver to reverse Blonde's teleport. In a desperate last effort, Blonde then tried to use the TARDIS as a secondary explosion, however while doing so, she looked into the heart of the TARDIS, which reverted her into an egg. Blonde was then returned home by the Doctor to be given a second chance at life. She would go on to be renamed Margaret after her human identity, and adopted by the Jingathine family. A year later in March of 2007, the Lutevin Day branch of the family took over a building company named Coldfire Construction, to place transducers around the Earth to be used to absorb the sun's energy, destroying the Earth in the process and avenging the Passamer Day members that had died. After doing so, they intended to buy a fleet of ships to destroy the Grand Council of Raxacorico Falipatorius. Around 18 months later, in 2008, these Slitheen would use equations by Luke Smith to correctly power the final stage of the machine. However, Luke didn't anticipate them draining the sun, so the machine began to overload and they were forced to switch it off. As Luke began to reset the system, his mother, Sarah Jane Smith, handed him her sonic lipstick and he used it to short out the machine. Several Slitheen were accidentally killed during this incident, including Kist Mag Thek, father to Korst Gog Thek Lutevin Day Slitheen. 
Having safely teleported away, later in 2008, Korst would team up with two other adult Slitheen and the Zylock named Mr. Smith to seek revenge for his father's death. However, unknown to the Slitheen, Mr. Smith had been secretly manipulating them to power Luke's mind with the Mitre headset, using it to bring the moon crashing towards the Earth. Now with a mutual enemy, the Slitheen reluctantly teamed up with Sarah Jane to provide her with support so she could reach Mr. Smith. The Armageddon virus was successfully uploaded into Mr. Smith with the help of K9, which stopped the moon from destroying the Earth and the Slitheen departed Earth without further conflict. 2009 saw yet another attempt by the Slitheen to destroy the Earth, with Slitheen trying to crush the Earth into a giant diamond. These Slitheen were ultimately thwarted and captured by two Blatherine, who sentenced them to death. The Blatherine would later go on to be revealed as Slitheen Blatherine, a family descended from both families with morals of the Slitheen side. Their intervention in the Slitheen Crisis was only to put their own plot into action. In the far future, in the 347th century, the family were still exiled from Raxacorico Palpatorius, although they were expected a reprisal in the coming 1000 years. They were also involved in the Platonic War, being amongst those defeated by the humans. As a form of revenge, they travelled back to an early point in human history, when Greece was facing famine. They gave them food, in exchange asking for champions to fight for them. The Slitheen were actually running a temporal tourist tour, with aliens coming to see the sites of future monuments, and with the human fighters being killed for their entertainment. Their eventual plan was for the humans to become too dependent on them, never develop technology and never develop an advanced civilization. The Tenth Doctor and June tried to stop them peacefully, but instead the native Greeks fought back destroying their time travel technology and throwing the whole organization into chaos. At an unknown date, the Slitheen were amongst the many species present at Trenzalore after being drawn there by the Time Lords asking the oldest question from another universe. The Slitheen took part in the Siege of Trenzalore, but they either retreated or were killed in the fighting which took place when the Daleks bypassed the Papal Mainframe's planet-wide force field, and the other fleets followed them in in their wake to the planet's surface. The Slitheen were all born hunters, and placed a great importance to hunting, including the hunting of sentient prey. In a Slitheen family tradition, they buried the eggs of their young deep underground in caves, so that they would hatch quite alone, and have to burrow their way out to survive. Newborn Slitheen thus came into the world with no food, guidance or sunlight. Not all Slitheen survived this ritual. According to Bloom van Gabart Slitheen, the Bartle Boogle tree was used to discipline children by spanking their backsides. Blonde said that Slitheen used venom grubs to dispose of family members not willing to engage in criminal activities. They sometimes displayed joy at triumph by disrobing. For Blonde, the act of removing a skin suit was liberating. The Slitheen had developed a method of disguising themselves as humans by first obtaining the skin of a dead human, referred to as a skin suit, and compressing themselves into it. In order for this to work, the human victim needed to be heavy set, and the compression had a side effect. A gas exchange occurs which causes the disguised Slitheen to frequently expel gas with a sound similar to human flatuation. But by late 2008, the compression field technology was improved to allow Slitheen to assume greater variety of human body types, and the gas exchange issue was eliminated. However, the Slitheen didn't invent this technology, they stole it from the Blatherine family. It wasn't always initially used, but would remain the standard until at least 2501. They also invented a transporter pendant, which could teleport them from one place to another. In the 347th century, the Slitheen had molecular repurposing devices, remotely controlled ships, and time traveling technology stolen from the Navarinus. Before the video ends, here's some interesting behind the scenes facts about the Slitheen. Of all the aliens created for the Revived series, the Slitheen have been featured the most, having appeared in six television stories, two books, and one short story. And the Slitheen are the only aliens from the main series to have appeared more times on screen in a spin-off show, having been featured in only four episodes, including the cameo in End of Time, of Doctor Who, yet appearing in six episodes, and one comic relief special, of the Sarah Jane Adventures. And that's it. All we know about the Slitheen from Doctor Who. Please let us know what your funniest moment with the Slitheen was in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video and found it useful, please consider liking the video and subscribing for more content like this in the future. Please also check out the videos on screen now if you have the time. Have a great day, and the next time you see your headmaster, 
Best to give him a spray of vinegar, just to be safe. Oops.